Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Shapiro Feature Walkthroughs. I'm joined today by Yosef Haas, our VP of Product. How are you today, Yosef? Doing great, Dana. How are you? I'm doing great and looking forward to learning more about Shapiro and its amazing features. So today, I believe we'll be exploring one of Shapiro's most anticipated new features. Is that right, Yosef? That's right, Daniel. Today, I'm going to be talking about the labor cost dashboard. It's one of the awesome. newest features we've come out with and something we're really excited about. Great. Please tell us all about it. So the labor cost dashboard gives you as a 3PL the ability to understand your actual costs for serving your clients. So while you might know how much you're charging your clients, you actually know how much it's costing you to serve those clients. So as you'll see, using the activity that we're tracking, we're able to assign a cost to that per client, per warehouse as well, if you have multiple warehouses. So you can see exactly how much it costs to serve clients, see if some clients cost you more than you expected or maybe even less than you expected. This gives you not only insight into the activity in your warehouse, gives you the ability to then go and optimize what's going on in the warehouse so you can lower your costs uh, and then if if necessary reprice your clients so that you're you're profitable uh, when serving your clients so now what i want to do is walk you through the setup of the labor cost dashboard so you can get actual insights from your data so when you go to the labor cost dashboard the first thing you're going to see is a preview mode now preview mode is using costs that are basically an average, an industry-wide or network-wide average that we see across all our clients, and using the actual events in your warehouse, assigning a cost to them. So it's not going to be your actual cost. That's some data we need from you first. But the preview mode does give you an, an idea of what data you'll see, and it can even give you some insights off the bat. So, for example, you can see if one client is all the way you know, to the right, taking a lot more time or a lot more cost than other clients. Even if those numbers aren't actually the actual costs, it still shows you a comparison of your different clients. So as you can see, you have the preview mode, which you'll see immediately and have data that you can use right away. But what we really want to do is go through the setup and put in the data, your data, so we can give you your own customized dashboard. So to do that, we're going to walk through the setup wizard. Now, once you click on that update cost button, you'll access the wizard and we'll take you through a setup so you can start putting in your data. The first step is you're going to put in your actual weekly payroll. Now, the reason we use that, the reason why we need that is because we track a lot of data in your warehouse, but we don't know everything that happens. So for example, there's your managers, there's people who are doing things outside of Shapiro. So without being able to account for those costs, we can't give you anything that's even close to accurate in terms of what your actual costs for serving your clients are. So what we're going to do is we're going to ask you to put in your payroll, your warehouse payroll on a weekly basis. And then using that, that information, using that data, we'll be able to tie that back to your actual costs uh, and give you more accurate data. So for the wizard, the first step is to select a time period. So I'll just select current week and the warehouses that you're going to be adding uh, in your labor cost dashboard. I'll just choose one warehouse for now and go to next. The next piece of information is uh, your bulk ship information. So as you know, bulk ship, you're picking a bunch of items, packing a lot of orders in a short amount of time. But again, that's something that's done outside of Ship Hero. So we're not really tracking how long it takes to actually pack an individual item or individual order. So what we're going to do is ask you to tell us how long does the average bulk ship order take to pack? Uh, and you can do that per client. So you can give us an overall average. So if let's say you think it takes 30 seconds to pack a bulk ship order, put 30 seconds, but you can do per client as well. So you click on add client, choose a client, and you can do different bulk ship times per client. So the next step is going to be to input the payroll information for the time period you selected. So there's three pieces of information we ask for. Your full-time payroll, your temp payroll, and any billed labor. So your full-time payroll, that's pretty straightforward. It's how much did you pay your full-time employees? So let's say, for example, your payroll was $10,000. You just put in $10,000. Temp payroll, if you did have temps working in that pay period, put in how much you, uh, you paid for temp. We don't treat them any differently in terms of tracking. 
The reason we separate is because your full-time payroll and your temp payroll may come from different places, maybe you get them at different times. So we separate it just to make it easier to input. And do note that any information you put in here, you can always go back and adjust it if something was wrong or you didn't have your temp payroll. You can always add it later, and that will be reflected in your dashboard. Now, build labor, that we, we want, want to know because we want to subtract it from your payroll. So what build labor would be, for example, is if you have special projects or things you're doing for clients that you're building them hourly. And the reason we want to take that out of payroll is because that labor does not necessarily tie directly to orders for that client. So if you're doing a kidding project, very hard, we can't really tie that, the, that kidding project to any individual orders. So what we do is you do a kidding project and you charge your client you know, $1,000, you put $1,000 in, we just deduct that from the full-time payroll so we can ac accurately calculate the amount of payroll that went towards fulfilling the orders for your client. The next thing is your average hourly wage. And what we do there is we want to know what is the average wage you pay your employees per hour. Um, and again, we use that when calculating how much different activities cost. So if an employee packed for an hour and they get paid $25 an hour, you know, we know there's $25 of of uh, cost to pack those orders. Now we do this one average for your whole warehouse. And of course, different people get paid different amounts. So there is kind of a little bit of a, of a calculating how much you want to put in for the average. Um, the ability to put in per employee wage is available in Workforce Hero. We're not using that right now for the labor cost dashboard. Um, and the reason we found is a lot of people aren't actually using that particular feature to put in the average hourly wage. Uh, or the hourly wage for an employee. So without having that data, we wanted to make sure we, we covered it with the average. The plan is to incorporate per employee um, wage later on. So let's say for example, my average hour, hourly wage is $25. Um, and I'll hit save. Now, one thing to note about the average hourly wage, include your, your full cost. So if you have benefits or insurance or other things that you provide to your employees, you want to include that in your, your average cost. Once you put in that data, it does take about 15 minutes or so to update things. So you'll see this message, uh, and then we'll see what that looks like once everything is calculated. So now that we've done calculating everything, we can look at the actual dashboard and see what type of information you can get out of. So starting from the top left, we can see that based on the data we have, it costs about $2.61 to fulfill an order. And this is an average across all, all of your customers. And that number is made up of four different elements. You're picking, you're packing, inventory, and other costs. So picking and packing are fairly straightforward. We're tracking the data and the amount of time it takes to pick an order using the mobile app and then pack it using the packing app. Uh, and all that is tracked again per client, per order. So we're getting very granular for every event and then using that to put together a cost. Inventory is any inventory movements. So that could be replenishment. It could just be moving inventory around the warehouse. Anytime you're using the app to move inventory, we're tracking that. We're looking at which customer it's for, and that gets included in the fulfillment cost. Other costs are any other activity that's not tracked in Shapiro. And that's how we use the payroll data to look at how much we've tracked, so how much cost we've actually tracked in Shapiro and how much we haven't based on how much your actual payroll was. And using that, we're able to assign a number of untracked costs that goes into the other. So that's used to figure out, you know, what is the manager? What is the people not using Shapiro? Um, things like receiving and things that are done outside of what's actually tracked within Shapiro. So using that and using a lot of math to kind of figure that out to try to assign an actual cost, um, we assign that in the other costs. And as time goes on, and as more things are tracked in Shapiro, we'll, we'll be able to uh, move that into the categories they belong. But right now, we're putting that in that bucket of other costs. Now, looking at bulk, we do a very similar thing. We look at you know what is the total uh, average for bulk shipments. For bulk, picking and packing are kind of put together um, because there isn't really a separate action in Shapiro. So picking and packing are together. And then you have your other and your inventory costs as well. Moving over to the graph, this is where you can really see where different clients end up. So um, you can see on the bottom, you have your list of clients, their total cost, number of shipments, and the cost per shipment. But up here, you can see 
where the clients uh, compare to your other clients. So for example, we can look at this client all the way up here. So a lot of costs, a lot of shipments, very low cost per shipment. So this is what we like to see. Client with a lot of shipments and a low cost per shipment. What we might not like to see is the client will be over here. So not a ton of shipments, cost a lot per shipment. And taking that and looking at that and now analyzing what actions can I do based on that? What can I learn about that client? Maybe for some reason their packing uh, takes a lot longer. And we'll, we'll see, we'll, we'll break that down as well. But this is a great tool to use just to give you an overview of you know, where do different clients stack up? Where do they compare to the average? Um, and you know, again, just taking action based on clients that don't belong where, where you think they, they, they would have been. Now this graph can be sorted by other things as well. So for example, if you wanna look at the highest total cost, we can do that and we can see which client costs us the most. So again, look at your outliers. And that's really one of the most powerful things about this dashboard, looking at the outliers, understanding what your actual costs are so you can look at clients and see, you know, are they cost what you expect them to cost? Uh, maybe you priced them based on one order profile, and that profile changed over time, and now they're, they're costing a lot more than you expected. So to the right of that, we have our insights. And this is information that we want to highlight so you can see at a glance interesting and good information about what's going on in your warehouse. So what's your top shipping client? What are your highest cost per shipment, your lowest cost per shipment? Over time, we'll, we'll change and add the type of information you see there, but it's a, a great place to just quickly glance when you start the day, how do things look yesterday, any surprises, anything different than you expected. Going down from there, we have a per warehouse performance. Really helpful if you have multiple warehouses, so you can see comparing different warehouses, how do they perform, are there different times of day that are better than others. Uh, maybe you learned something that, that you didn't know about one warehouse versus another. Great high level information to see. Below that is your client detail. So here we're gonna look at and detail each client and you can filter that as well. So you can choose which clients you wanna see. And then you can expand that to see that per warehouse as well. So this is gonna give you great detail per client, per warehouse. And we break, the, break it down into the individual activity that you do for each client. So you can see your single item batch, your multi-item batch, Total picking, same thing for, for packing, single item, multi-item, bulk ship, inventory, and other costs. So this is where you can really see and understand if there's something that's going on that you didn't expect. So for example, one client, maybe their packing costs are much higher than you expect and much higher than other, other clients. You can dig into why. Especially helpful if you have multiple warehouses, you can compare warehouses at a glance. So does one warehouse, you know, maybe their slotting in one warehouse is not as good as another, your picking costs a lot more. So typically you should see pretty close cost per warehouse for the same client if they have the same order profile. If not, you know, maybe something is wrong. Use this to then dig into that and make corrections. And the great thing is this gets updated every day. So tomorrow you can see if that had an effect. If you move something around, if you put in a new process, you can immediately see is that having an impact. Below that, Another great piece of information per client, cost and time per shipment. So you can see how long does it take and what does it cost per shipment for an individual client. And again, that's done per warehouse as well. So you can dig into it. Let me break that out, picking and packing, bulk, inventory movements, and the other costs as well. So the same type of information, but broken down uh, per shipment instead of for the total client. And then you have your warehouse view. So this is a great way to, again, look at per warehouse, comparing your warehouses. What is the average shipment cost for, for that warehouse? The picking, packing, all the same detail, but easily compare per warehouse. One thing I want to note is you can see by all these numbers, we have the dollar cost on top and then the time on bottom. Now the dollar, dollar amount is really just a function of time. So if something takes 10 minutes, there's a cost associated with that 10 minutes, so that's your dollar amount. We show both just to give you kind of that, that visibility into how long something takes and not just the dollar amount, but those two are obviously gonna be very related because you're paying for that time, so there's a cost associated with it. Just going to the settings page to show you how you can change and update your information. Um, so you can see here we have our bulk ship. Again, that could be a 
one number for all your clients, or you can override that on a per client basis. Here's where you can also update your average hourly wage per warehouse. And then in the bottom is your labor cost per warehouse again. Um, that's the information you input. If you want to change it, you can delete it. Just hover over it. You can delete it and add it again, or you can add your cost for the current week. Now, if you get behind and don't add, a, add an individual week, we'll use the previous week's information, so the previous week's uh, payroll to, to do all the calculations. Again, we do encourage you to keep that up to date so you have the most up-to-date and accurate information. Uh, if you don't update it for a few weeks, we do add, add a notice on top saying that your, your costs are out of date. And again, just encouraging you to keep that up to date so you can get the most value and the most information out of it. Uh, I do want to reiterate that even without the actual dollar amounts and the or the updated dollar amounts, you can still see a great comparison of your different clients. So we're still tracking the time. We're still tracking how long things take. So even if the, the dollar amounts are not completely up to date and accurate, you can still see if is one client taking longer than others. Has there been a change over time for that client? Has there been a change over time for other clients? Um, and use that information to make changes within the warehouse. Back on the dashboard, I just want to point out you can filter this by warehouse. So again, you can filter the dashboard to view only certain warehouses or multiple. Uh, and there is a date selector as well. So by default, we're showing the last seven days. There are other options and you can do your own custom start and ending time as well. Another thing I want to encourage you to do is visit our help articles. We have extensive write-up on what what is a dashboard, how you can use it, what information is used in the dashboard, what it all means. So if there's anything that you saw in the video you're not quite sure about, take a look at the help doc. Uh, we have the information here. If, if you still have any questions, definitely reach out to our support team. So hopefully that gave you a good idea on how to use and uh, how to set up your labor cost dashboard. I encourage you to check it out. There's a lot of great information that can help you optimize and make your warehouse more efficient. Awesome, Yosef, and thank you very much. I think this is a really powerful tool and everyone should be leveraging the actionable insights that it gives you today. Absolutely. And if you'd like to check out other feature walkthroughs, click on the top right corner right now. And if you're ready to unlock your e-commerce fulfillment superpowers, visit shapiro.com to schedule a call with us. Thank you for watching and have a great day.